this is the day that the Lord has made and I will be glad and I will rejoice in it. And as we stand today, Lord, we ask that you move and you guide and you lead us in the way that you would want us to go. Father, we have done so much that we felt that was not pleasing in your sight, but Lord, take this opportunity in this time to allow us to come into your presence, Lord. We want to say that we give it all to you, Lord. We give everything that we have on the inside of you to, to you today, Lord. We ask that you take everything that's not like you out, Lord. Put everything on the inside of us, Lord, that will help us to grow in your word, to grow in your knowledge. And Father, I just thank you for raising us up today, Lord, that we are people that are marching. We won't break rank, Lord. And we thank you for giving us this day, Lord, because we stand in your presence today, Lord. We stand on your word today, Lord, because without you, we cannot do anything. Lord, without you, we, we won't move, Lord. Without you, we can't breathe. But Father, we just thank you for allowing us to stand, the Lord. And all the things that we've been through, Lord, you could have gave up on us, but Lord, you never left us, nor have you forsaken us. Lord, you've always been a buckler and a shield for us. Lord, you protected us in the midst of storms. Lord, you kept us in the wee wee hours of the night. Lord, when you when no one else was there, Lord, you were there. And Father, because you were there, we stand in awe today because we have breath in our body. Lord, we have food on our tables and Lord, we have a roof over our heads and we just say thank you for everything that you've done for us. We say thank you on this day for keeping us. We say thank you for guiding us. We say thank you for leading us. Because you understand, Lord, that without you we are lost. And without you, Lord, we will lose our way. But Lord, we just say thank you. For those of you who are listening or watching me, for wherever you may be, just take a few minutes and just tell the Lord thank you for all of his wonderful works, for all the things that he's done for us, for all the things that he's delivered you from. Let's just say thank you. We got so much to be thankful for. Even when it's good and not so good, just say thank you. And I just wanted to start today off by just giving a prayer and a thanks to God. There are people out there today that are hurting. There are people out there today that are lost and just say, I need to find a way. And even as you may feel that nobody cares, the Bible tells us in 2 Peter 5 and 7, it says, cast all your cares upon him because he cares for you. And when you know that you have somebody that has your back, you know that there's somebody that's standing next to you. There's somebody that wants to lead and that wants to guide you. Jesus Christ, he's there. And that's the word that God wanted me to put in your heart today just to let you know that he's there and he will never leave you nor forsake you. I want to say thank you for joining me today and I just want you to do me a favor. I want you to share this message. I want you to send somebody a note and say, you know what, this message, we're on live and we want to be able to transfer what is about to take place. Because when the gospel says the translation means good news, it's just not good enough just for you by yourself, but the gospel means that it's the news that it has to go beyond just in your home and just in your little four walls, but pass this message on and let people know that I want to share this message with you because there's a word that's going to come forth that's going to cause a change to happen in your life. God bless you on today, and I thank you for joining me. And I have something that God just dropped into my spirit, and I want to share this note with you. And if you got your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to the book of Genesis. And the book of Genesis is kind of the beginning. It's the start where everything took place. You know, when we start in the first chapter, it says, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. And in the beginning, the earth was void and God called things. And he said, let there be light. And there was light. And these things started transferring. Today, I'm going to command some things that's going to change in your life. I'm speaking life. And when you understand that there's a journey we all have to take in life. Some of us have a journey that takes us further than others. Some of us have to take a few steps that others don't have to take. I remember my dad telling me this story and this story blessed me and I'll share it with you this morning. 
And he was talking about there was two men that were thumbing for a ride. And the first man says, uh, I'm tired of standing here. We have been out here for all this time. Nobody's picked us up. And the guy said, I'm committed. I'm going to continue to wait out here because somebody will pick us up. And the guy said, well, you continue to do that. I'm tired. I'm just going to give up. And the guy said, okay, well, you can sit there, but somebody will pick us up. And by and by, time went by, and all of a sudden, the car stopped. The guy gets into the car, and the guy looks in amaze and says, wow, somebody really stopped and picked him up. And now the car, he shuts the door, and the car drives and goes one block. And the guy gets out the car, and now the guy starts laughing, and he says, ah, you didn't go nowhere. He looked back at him, and he says, you know what, you may have thought I didn't go anywhere, but I'm looking back at you. I went further than you did. Sometimes we got to look at life and say, you may not be where you want to be. You may not have went as far as you wanted to go. But when you look back over your life and you look back at situations, you'll say, you know what? I'm not in the same place no more. I'm further along than I was yesterday. So people are looking at you and they're saying, okay, you'll never be anything. You're never going anywhere. But look back over your life and look how far you've come. Look how far God has led you. Look how far God has kept you. And just understand this. Say, I'm a lot further than you are. And I want you to get your Bibles with me today. I want to take you through a few scriptures in the book of Genesis, the fifth chapter. So get your Bibles today. Um, I, you know, I, I call it BBB, bring back your Bibles. We're going to call this the triple B today. I want you to bring back your Bibles. I don't want you to sit there and uh, uh, listen at me, but I want you to read through the scriptures with me today. So we're going to go through a little Bible study. And so we're going to call this the triple B's, the BBB plan. So bring back your Bible on today. And I want you to get your Bibles with me, and I want you to turn to the book of Genesis, the fifth chapter, and we'll start at the 21st verse, Genesis 5 and 21. And Enoch lived 60 and five years and begot Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he had begot Methuselah 300 years, and he begot the sons and the daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 365 years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. And the point that I wanted to pull out of this text today, it says that Enoch, he walked with God. Now, when you look at how or how can you walk with God and what was the significance of why the writer tells us that Enoch walked with God when he started. He lived 60 and 65 years and then he had a child. And after that child, he said that Enoch walked with God after he begot uh, Methuselah 300 years he begot the sons and daughters. So all of the years that Enoch lived, the writer is telling us that he walked with God. I want you to take a moment and I want you to think about that. Have you ever been in a place that you can say that you walked with God? Have you been in a place that you were on the right trail and all of a sudden you, you found yourself deterring off of your path? Have you been to a place where you've seen so many things that have happened in your life and it caused you to draw back on what in the word that you needed to be? And now when you see, the writer tells us that Enoch walked with God. I want you to ponder on that just for a moment. Enoch walked with God. And, I'm, and, I, and I sat there and I thought about it. I said, how many times in our life have we been lost and we couldn't find our way. How many times have we been in a place where that we needed directions? I remember my parents tell the story how we were in California. And this is the old times where, olden days where the GPS used to sit on your dashboard. It was a little square box and you used to mount it on your dashboard. And it used to take the, 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 the GPS signal will have to be in a clear span, so that's why you had to sit the GPS on your dashboard. And we were riding, we were traveling out of town and all of a sudden the GPS uh, did not work anymore. And we found ourselves lost and didn't have any direction. I know we live in a time now where the GPS is on our phones and we got these smartphones, but during this time, that was not the case. We were out of town and we had no idea where we were going. And I remember saying, and, I, and, and I'm guilty of doing this because I do it a lot, I'll be lost and never open my mouth and say that I'm lost. And we were riding and time was just passing by and all of a sudden my, my, my dad spoke up. He said, son, are you lost? 
And I had to start laughing, and I'm like, yeah, I'm lost. He said, I knew, uh, knew you'd been lost for such a long time, but I waited to see if you were going to say something. How many times in our life have we been lost, but we didn't want to say anything? You've been going around this cycle of life, and you've been going from this door to that door, and every door has been closed, but you don't want to realize or accept the fact that you have been lost. And I remember sitting there, and after over an hour of driving around, not knowing which way I was going, and every street looked as similar and I said okay wait a minute I came down this street all I needed to do was to get back to the main street where I knew that can take me back to my destination that's where God wants us to do this morning he wants us to get back to the place where that you know that this is the direct path this is the main direction this is the main street that God wants you to be on and all I kept saying if I can just get back to a familiar place then I can get back to the place that where I was going. If I can get back to a place that I recognize that has some type of similarity, then I know that I can find my way back to get to where I was trying to go. Sometimes in life, you'll get to a place where all you want and you're looking for that familiarity feeling. You're going back to that place where you once had joy. You're trying to get back to that place where you once had happiness. You're trying to get back to that place where you once had peace. But sometimes in life that you are lost in all all I had to do was get to a place where I said that I am lost and I need some help. See, when you get to uh, uh, things in life, when you can realize it, just say, you know what? I'm lost and I need help. I'm in a place where I don't know how to get back to where I was. So I, I, I thought about that if I just could get back to that main street and I said if I turned down this corner, oh, I thought about it. Well, I came down this street and I turned here, but the reality was I was too proud to say that I was lost. And I want you to take a moment to think about this in your life. You get to a place where that you are too proud to think about that I don't want to tell anybody that I'm messed up. I don't want people to realize or to know that I don't, I'm not living my best life. I'm not living the life that God has ordained for me. I'm at a place where I, I, I don't want people to know that I go to church in the, in the morning, but in the afternoon that I'm, I'm sitting there with a bottle in my hand. I don't want people to know that in church I'm saying hallelujah and praise the Lord, but in the afternoon I'm cussing somebody out with a blunt in my hand. I don't want people to know that when uh, you look at me all dressed up, but then when I get home, Home that the inside of me feels all dirty and I, I don't feel that I'm clean but that's the place that God wants us to be he wants to put us back on the right path he wants to put us back in the right direction that's why the writer tells us in, in, in Psalms 37 and 23 it says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord when God orders your steps he gives you puts you in a place that now you're looking at life in a way that I was once lost, but now I'm found. That's why the writer tells us about the prodigal son. When you read the story about the prodigal son, you'll see how the prodigal son took all of his earthly inheritance and he went and he squandered it. But there came a point in his life where he realized that, wait a minute, I just need to get back to the place where I knew that things was good, going good for me. I need to get back to the place where I realized that my life was in a better place and not like where I'm at now. When you get to a place in your life when you understand have you ever hit rock bottom and when you get so low to the ground you remember that I'm on the bottom of the rock but I had to realize who holds the rock the rock is Christ when you realize that you come to a place that you forget about and you don't care about what people think about you you don't care about how people look at you and all you are saying is that I just need to get back to the place where I once was somebody need to type it on your screen say I'm lost and I need to get back home somebody need to open your mouth and say Lord I am lost and I need to find my way back to you because you cannot sit there and you allow things or the life cycle to continue to go around and you get to a place that you're saying that I am lost, but I don't want to ask nobody for help. And when I, when I, when I thought about these things and God gave me a, a, a scripture and I want you to turn with me in your Bibles, the BBB plan, bring back your Bible. I want you to look at Psalms 119 and 105. When you understand where you get back to that place and that you need direction. I remember waking up one night and I, and I was walking and I didn't turn the lights on and I was trying to find my way to the light switch. And as I was walking, because there was no light on, I hit my feet. 
And I'm telling you, that was a pain that just make you want to call on the name of Jesus. And I hit my toe and I was like, oh, Jesus. But the reason why, because there was no light and I couldn't find out which way I was going. That's where we're at. When you don't have Christ on the inside of you, you have no light. Watch me. Now, I want you to get your brain back, your Bible, the BBB. Turn with me to Psalms 119 and 105. And it says, the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. See, there's a God is trying to turn the light light on so that you can have clear direction on where you need to go. When you look at life and you're seeing that the word of God is the light, he's trying to lead us in the way that he wants us to go. And so without the light, without the word, there is no light. I have said again, without the word, there is no light. And he said, the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So the word of God will give you direction on which way you need to go. See, you're sitting in a place now and you're wondering why you continue to make these mistakes. You're sitting in a place and you're wondering why you continue to going through these same issues and struggles and problems because you don't have the word of God that's giving you direction. And I'm saying that, God, why am I continuing to having these same issues? Why do I see so many people that are lost and not seeing in a way what they should be? Because they have lost their way. They have lost the direction on which way I was trying to get them to go. Majority of the church world will say, I grew up in church. But at some point, at some time in their life, they have lost their way. Think about that moment in your life where you seem to have lost your way. Think about that moment where things that you normally would never do, you find yourself starting to do. Think about at that moment in your life that you seem that I wouldn't say some of the things that I say out of my mouth, but now you come into a place where you say all kind of matter of things come out of your mouth. At what point in your life did you lose direction? And when you see that you're getting to a place where you have lost direction, now it's time to lift up your hands and say, I need help. Somebody need to type that on your screen right now and say, I need help. If you're watching me from your mobile device, if you're on your laptop, your computer, somebody need to write that on the screen right now and say, I need help. Because I am lost and I have lost my way. I'm, I, I'm asking God to bring me back to that place where I once found you. God, God, bring me back to that place where that I didn't have to worry about whether this was right and that was wrong. Lord, bring me back to that place. I am lost and I need help. If that was a word, if I had to put a title to this message, that would be the title of this message. It said, I am lost and I need help. Because God, I said that you told me in your word that you was the light and the lamp unto my feet. And because I have gotten away from your word, I have lost my direction. I am lost and I need help. Because when I said, the Bible says, cry loud, spare not, lift up your voice. When I opened my mouth and I said, God, I am lost and I need help. See, I'm not too proud. There was an old song back in the 70s or the 60s. I don't know what year it was, but it said, I ain't too proud to beg. I ain't too proud to ask God, Lord, bring me back to that place. I ain't too proud to beg God and hit my knees and say, Lord, I am lost and I can't find my way back to you. And I'm just I'm telling somebody today, are you too proud to beg? You need to open your mouth and say, God, I am lost and I need help. When I start begging and crying out, even David said, even the, the, uh, the writer said in, in Psalms 50, in Matthew, the 15th chapter, the woman came to Jesus and she said, Lord, I, my daughter is vexed with a devil and I need help. And she, Jesus said, is it not lawful to give that which is bring, belongs to God to give it to the dog? And she said, yeah, Lord, but even the dogs get the crumbs from the master table. She had to realize that she lost all she had, that she had nowhere else to turn. But she got to a place where she said that I don't care what happens. I need help. I don't care how bad you make me feel. I don't care how I look, I realize that I need help. How many people are watching or listening at me right now and you're saying to yourself that I need help? I hear what you're saying, Pastor, but I'm lost and I, I don't want people to know what I'm going through. I don't want people to know how bad I'm doing. I don't want people to know I'm about to lose my house. I'm, about, I'm in the point, I'm brink of a foreclosure. I don't want people to know I don't have money in my bank account, but I ain't too proud to beg because I got to ask God, Lord, I'm at this place 
place and I'm at the lowest point in my life, but I ain't too proud to beg because I know where my source and my help comes from. God, I ain't too proud to beg. Lord, I'm going to put my shame away. I'm going to put my pride away because I ain't too proud to beg because I am lost and I cannot find my way because I know where my strength comes from. I know where my helps come from. And I'm telling God, Lord, I have lost my way. I've lost my direction in life. I'm doing things that I never thought that I would do before. I'm talking what to people that I never thought that I would talk to. I'm saying things out of my mouth that I never thought that I would say. I am lost and I can't find my way. God wants to give you to a place where he said, open your eyes and hear what I'm trying to tell you this morning. The word of God is a light to you. It is a lamp unto your feet and he will give you directions in every way you need to go. But you got to say, Lord, I ain't too proud to be. Lord, I'm going to continue to come to you as long as you allow me to come to you. As long as you give me breath in my body, Lord, I'm going to say I ain't too proud to be. Because, Lord, I said I am lost and I can't find my way. And that's what the writer tells us in there. You know, a few weeks ago, my dad started going over some scriptures. And these scriptures that he gave, it started touching me. And I was like, hmm. When you look at the word path, P-A-T-H, and it talks about the direction. It talks about how God wants to lead us. And I want you to turn with me to Psalm 16 and 11. And when you look at the word path, and then God is trying to give us direction. And watch this. He says in Psalm 16 11, are y'all following me? Y'all got your BBB? Bring back your Bible. And watch this. He says, thou will show me the path of life. In the presence is fullness of joy. At the right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. God telling us that he said, I will give you pleasures forevermore. But all you got to do is stay on the path. When you get off the path, you're going to lose direction. When you get off the path, you're going to find yourself ending up somewhere that you never thought you would be. But when we stay on the path, he will give us the fullness of joy. And I want you to now follow me to Proverbs, the second chapter. And I want you to give me the eighth and ninth verse. Follow me today. Proverbs, the second chapter, the eighth and the ninth verse. Now watch this. It says, he keepeth the paths of judgment and preserveth the way of his saints. God said that I will keep you and preserve you as long as you stay on the path. Watch this. And now he says, then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and the equity, yea, every good path. He said that when you understand that when you realize that you have been lost, now you're seeking me and said, Lord, I'm ready to be found. That's what the prodigal son had to say. He said that, Lord, I was lost, but now I'm found. I've lost everything that I've had. I've tried to do it on my own. How many of you out there today said that you tried to do it on your own, but now you got to realize and open your mouth and say, God, I'm, I'm coming back to your house. I'm I'm getting back to the way that I used to be. I'm getting back to the basics and I'm now not trying to do it on my own, but I'm trying to do it in the way that you want me to do it. Lord, lead me in the direction you want me to go. Lead me down the right path because I am lost and I can't find my way. And all you got to do is open your mouth right now and say, Lord, I need help because I'm trying to do it on my own and it seems that it's not working. I'm trying to figure out the way how to fix it, but it's just not working. Open your mouth right now and say, Lord, I need help. I need need help in the way that I'm going. I need help when I'm going down the road. I need help when I wake up in the morning. I need help when I go throughout today. Lord, I am lost and I need help. Show me the way to go. Show me how to do it. Lord, I am lost and I need help. I'm trying to get things fixed. I'm trying to do better, but it's just not working. Lord, I am lost and I need help. And I said, God, there are so many things that we're going through in life. Watch this. Give me the book of Proverbs, the fourth chapter in the 26th verse. Open your Bibles follow me today. And God trying to tell me that there is a path that he wants you to go on. And if you stay on this path, you'll never again be lost in your life. If you stay on this path, things will happen to you. He's going to bring you back to the fullness of joy. If you stay on the path, he's going to bring you back to the place that you would never be lost again. Proverbs, the fourth chapter in the 26th verse, it says, ponder the path of thy feet and let all the ways be established. And so then if I look at, if I'm pondering the ways of my feet, Lord, should I go left? Should I go right? Should I go forward? Should I go backwards? Should I do this deal, Lord? Should I get into this relationship? Should I go down this alley? Should I do this? All the things that God said, if you ponder the ways of thy feet, he said, then I will let all of thy ways be established. We're too busy trying to do it on our own. And God's saying, hold up, but you're still trying to go forward. God's saying, 
I'm trying to lead you, but your feet are doing their own thing. You're, you're, you're trying to do it on your own. And God says, just stand still. But you're too busy, body. You got too much time on your hands. And you're saying, God saying, just stand still. Wait on me. But you, 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 continue, you continue to move. And God said, just stand still. But you say, no, I got to fix it. I got to make the donuts. Come on, somebody. I got to make the donuts. And God saying that the don't, you can't get the dough because I'm the baker. And until the baker puts the, the form to the dough, you'll never get to make it. But God saying, stand still. And you you're saying, how can I stand still? Fool, I see you walking back there. Come here a minute, fool. And I'm, I'm going to give you an example of what God showed me. There are too many people that have lost their way. And God saying, will you trust me? Will you lean on me? Will you allow me to direct you, fool? I, you, you're going to be my example today. I want you to sit here. Sit, sit on this chair for me, fool. And, and, and I want to do something to you. Fool, do you trust me? Fool, now help me understand this. You were once in the military, right? And so in the military, y'all had to take directions. So then when you went into the military, they had to change the way that you thought. Because you came into the military and you thought about that, you know what, I'm my own man. I'm, I'm going to do things my way. But then they had to show you that you are not your own man without having direction. Because if there was ever a war, if there was ever something that break out, if you could not, if you could not take direction, you would cause other people to die. Am I correct? And so one of the things in life that we have to remember is that when you go through life, if you're not willing to take direction, you're going to find yourself falling short. And so for, when you stood up, God told me, he said, use you as an example today. And so now what I want to do, I'm going to ask you again, Fu, do you trust me? I trust you. So I'm, I'm going to ask you one more time, Fu, do you trust me? Yeah, I trust you. Okay, so then you're going to be a perfect example today. Now you see, Fu, all around you, this is a stage. And on this stage that if you were to walk and you miss that ledge, that can be damaging. Am I correct? Now, this is some stairs. And so on these stairs, if I miss one step, this can be kind of catastrophe, right? And so then now God is telling us in the form of life that there are so many ways that are around us. There are so many areas on this stage that can cause us to hurt ourselves. You can trip. You can trip over the edge. You can fall over. Right. You can fall down these stairs. You can um, basically break your neck. Right. But then what happens now? You can see everywhere you want to go. Am I correct? So then now what happens? And this is what God is trying to get us today. Now, let me change the narrative. I want to ask you again, fool, do you trust me? Yes, sir. All right. Hold that for me, fool. Yes, sir. All right. So now, fool, I want to ask you again. We're going we go to we go give a little example this morning. All right. Okay. So in this example, fool, can you see anything right now? No. Okay. So everything is dark, right? Yes, sir. And this is what God wants us to understand, that in life, there's you, you don't have to worry about trying to figure out which way you want to go. But God is saying that I want to be your guide. I want to lead you. I want to give you the direction you need to go. So, fool, I want you to stand up real quick. And so I want you to understand, fool, I want you to walk around this stage. Will you, will, do you, will you walk around this stage? Yes, sir. Will you? Okay, so, but now I want you to walk without me giving you instructions. Will you do that? Yes, sir. Okay, you still want to do that. Now, I, want to, I don't want you to hurt yourself because you cannot see. So then my question is, blindfolded, will you, will you knowingly walk across this stage being blindfolded? No. Nah. Okay, that's where we are at. People are being blindfolded and trying to go into direction. Fool, so I'm going to lead you today. And so now what God is telling us, he said the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he directs his steps. God wants to lead you this morning. He wants to give you direction. So fool, if I had to tell you if you was in the army and if I had to say about faith, what would you do? So now you are about faith and now I want you to follow me, fool. I want you to take two steps and I want you to come towards me. So now, fool, I want you to turn to your left. And now I want you to take three steps, fool, and I want you to start walking. Now I want you to listen to my voice. Stop, fool. And this is how God is telling us that when we can follow his instructions. Now, fool, I want you to turn to your left. And I want you to turn slightly to your left. 
Now, I want you to stay right there for a minute. Now, fool, if you come down just a few steps, you're going to be hitting the steps. But if you listen to me, fool, I'm going to make sure that you don't fall. Will you listen to me? Yes, sir. I see. Now, what happens is, is that we want to get ahead of God. And God is trying to tell us that if you pay attention to me, listen to my voice, I'll make sure that anything that causes you to fall short, you won't do it. Fool, I want you to take two small steps. Now, fool, do you still trust me? There's some stairs that are about to come in front of you, but I'm telling you, you still got a few more steps to take. Do you trust me? Take two more steps, fool. And now see that that's as far as I want you to go. Because if you go any farther, fool, I want you to listen to me. You're going to fall down some steps. Do you trust me? And God is saying, will you trust me today? Will you listen to my voice? Because there are too many people that are trying to get beside God. They're trying to get ahead of God. And God's saying, I want to lead you. I want to take you in the way you need to go. And God said that I will lead you in the path of righteousness for my name's sake. Yo, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I won't fear no evil because thou God you are with me and you comfort me if I went a little further then I'll say that wait a minute son I don't want you to go because there's a, st there's a ledge here and if you continue to walk this way you're going to fall off that ledge so wake up wait wait a minute son I'm going to bike up a few steps and I want to lead you this way and God is saying that I'm going to lead you in the path of righteousness hold on son there's some steps right here and if you don't pay attention you're going to fall down these steps God said hold on no I don't want you to go that way either back up son and now when we go through life and he's saying that sometimes we want to move forward but God wants to back us up now God said I'm going to lead you in every way that you need to go and if you trust me I'm going to make sure that every step that you take is going to be in my will every step that you take is going to be in my way but God said I want to lead you and I want to guide you but if you trust me I'll never lead you in the wrong way I'll never cause you to fall short of what I'm giving you in your life God wants us to walk in the path that he's given us and if we can trust God and if we can lead on him God will make sure everything that we do will be all right fool I just wanted to say thank you today because this is a test there are so many people that are out there that continue to look at God and they're saying God I got this thing figured out and God saying that if you allow me to lead you I'll make sure that everything is gonna be all right God wants to lead you today thank you fool God wants to make sure that everything that you do in your life God wants to tell you that I want to lead you in the right path Somebody got to open your mouth today and say that I am lost and Lord, I need help. I told you, you can't be too proud to get to a place where you're telling God and saying, God, that I'm lost. I don't know which way to go, but God, if, if I put the blinders on and I stop trying to see it in the way that I'm trying to see it, but if I allow you to instruct me, if I listen to your voice and God direct me, that's why the writer tells us the path of the just is like a shining light that shineth more and more unto a perfect he wants to lead you but we can't get off the path stay on the path this path is taking us down a journey this path is taking us in a good direction but we got to make sure we're on the right path and God saying will you listen to me today if you can say, Lord, I surrender right now, wherever you're sitting at, say, God, I surrender and I give it all back to you. God wants us to get into a place where let it all go. It's not worth it. Let it all go. And just say, God, I want you to direct me. I want you to lead me. And wherever you at, lifting your hands is a sign of surrender. I know you're watching me by whatever way you're watching me or you listen to me, but I ask you to do this. Lift your hands right now and just tell God, say, God, I surrender. Lord, I see what the prodigal son did. He had to get to a place where he let it all go. He said, I know I messed up and I made a mistake, but Lord, I'm giving it back to you. Give it back to him today. And if you believe what I'm telling you, the passage of life 
you were once lost, but God will tell you that you're found. And that message today is going to bless you and others to realize that no matter what stage you're in, if you're, if you're listening to me right now, you've made the first step. And now the next step is saying, Lord, I'm letting it all go and help me find my way back home. Put me back on the path. And if I can get on this path, I promise you, I would never leave. And I, and I close with this. My dad told this story and I he was a great storyteller as we was growing up and he used to tell me this story and he would say there was a father and a daughter they were going down a, a walk one day and they was walking in the midst of the woods and he told his daughter he said daughter my instructions are to you are staying on the path and as long as you stay on this path you will be okay and the daughter she started playing and time went by and the father said I'm just going to slow up a little bit and the daughter was a few feet ahead of him and she would ever so often turn around and look to see if the father was there. After a while, she got too confident. She stopped looking back at the father. And the father said, now I'm gonna use this as an example. I'm gonna hide behind this tree and I'm gonna see how long before she looks back to see if I'm still with her. And time went by and after a while, the little girl went off the path and she started veering in a different direction. And she started turning around and she was looking for her father. As long as the father was there, she felt confident. But she stopped paying attention. And after a while, she just sat there and she started crying. Because she was lost. She didn't know which way to go. Because she had veered off the path. The father now, he lets her cry for a little while. And then he comes from behind the tree and he says to her, Daughter, I told you, stay on the path. And you were confident as long as you knew that I was there, but you got beside yourself and you stopped paying attention. And you got off the path. So I encourage those of you out there that are listening to me, pay attention. And knowing that God is with you, and as long as he's with you, you'll never make a mistake. And I pray today that this message was a blessing to you. I pray that you are now getting to a place where you're saying that I'm coming back to find my way back home. And if you're out there and you're listening, I'm asking that each and every one of you do something today. I want you to get a seed offering in your hand. And that seed that as you're sowing this seed today, you're saying, God, this is the seed that I am sowing because I've lost my way. And Lord, that when the seed is planted, that Bible says, once the seed is planted, it going into good ground. And when it plant, it's going to take root and it's going to grow. And now it's going to produce your harvest. And I want you to do me a favor today. I want everybody to get a seed of $35 by way of cash app. You can give online. You can pick up the phone and call. And $35 is saying that I am starting all over again. And I tried not to put a name to a seed or a mount, but God just dropped in my spirit. He said, to, you tell everybody who's watching, you get $35 in their hand. Give it by way of credit card. You can pick up the phone and dial, or you can go on our website and give it. But when you give this $35 seed, you're activating what God is going to do in your life. Do it now and watch what God do. God bless you. God keep you. And remember to stay on the path.